The San Diego courts are behind with thousands of cases now backlogged. They want to bring juries back to the courtroom. Their plan to keep those San Diegans safe while they serve. Santa Ana winds mean fire danger across the county. How San Diego is preparing while crews across the state tackle the fires raging out of control. Plus some San Diego children are headed back to class. We're gonna check in with parents adjusting as their kids try to get safely back to school. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. Court is about to be back in session downtown, and after a six-month pause, they're going to bring in-person juries back to the courtroom. Good evening. I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. There are concerns about whether the courts can keep our jurors safe. New at 6, our ABC 10 News reporter Jennifer Kastner reveals how they plan to catch up on the backlog of cases without risking the spread of coronavirus. As ABC 10 News was told on Monday, one of the biggest obstacles is going to be finding a pool of potential jurors who feel comfortable coming into the courthouse. Civic duty strained by the coronavirus. In two weeks, the downtown central courthouse plans to resume jury trials following a long hiatus since the March shutdown. On Monday, ABC 10 News spoke to presiding judge Lorna Alksney about the thousands of cases that have been in limbo. I do have an incredible backlog not only in criminal, but also in civil. 900 jury duty summonses have been sent out for telephonic standby for in-person appearances in groups of 70. The jury lounge, if you've ever been here in the central courthouse, holds five or 600 people. But instead of that, we're gonna bring in 70, socially distance them, mark the chairs that they can sit on, have it cleaned regularly. Those selected for jury will sit in courtrooms retrofitted with protective measures like plexiglass barriers. Judge Alksney said there are around 2,400 criminal cases ready for trial that must be reset. But beyond that, there are thousands of other criminal proceedings to get to. There's about 17,000 other types of things that need to be reset before they can even get to a trial. Civil cases are another obstacle. The court reports 54,000 are pending. 2,800 are ready to go to trial, but most civil jury trials won't resume until likely sometime in 2021. The only way I'm going to beat this backlog is if jurors uh, come in for jury service. And so if you feel like you're able to serve, we would ask you to to respond to the summons and, and come into court and help us get the jury trials started again. Judge Alksney added that civil bench trials where there's no jury will start in mid-October. In-person arraignments will begin November 1st. Jennifer Kastner, ABC 10 News. Here are the latest numbers on the coronavirus in San Diego. Today, the county reported 124 new cases. There have been more than 46,000 since it all started. No new deaths on a Monday reported. 776 San Diegans have lost their lives due to COVID-19. Governor Gavin Newsom is warning some counties to brace for a possible COVID resurgence. While it's true, we have seen a threefold decrease in the total number of cases since our peak mid-July. We are seeing early signs that those decreases are beginning to slow down. They're beginning to plateau. The virus reproduction number, or R number, measures how many people can be infected at any given time. Governor Newsom said that number hit its lowest point in Southern California in late August. Now the governor said it's beginning to trend upward. That means some counties could be in for a second wave of COVID infections. He specifically included our neighborhood, Imperial County. Right now, fire crews are preparing for what could be a rough week with hot, windy weather bringing new fire danger. Within the last hour, our ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala got an update from SDG&E about the potential for power shutoffs. It doesn't have to be a major fire to affect people. It's hot, very dry and windy. A recipe forcing San Diego's fire crews to be on high alert, especially in the back country. sdg &E initially warned hundreds of East County customers of the possibility of a public safety power shutoff. The shutoffs are approved by California regulators to reduce the fire risk during dangerous weather conditions. By Monday afternoon, sdg &E said they didn't anticipate having to shut off any power. Although some customers in Descanso were warned they could possibly still be impacted due to the forecasted winds in the area. The National Weather Service extended Monday's red flag warning through Tuesday at 5 p.m. for the inland valleys and mountains. 
A heat advisory will also be in effect Tuesday through Thursday, keeping dangerous fire conditions in the forecast. Just weeks ago, we saw the Valley Fire destroy homes and thousands of acres in Hapital Valley. Cal Fire crews are preparing for the possibility of a similar situation. So if everybody can do their part, anything they can think of that might start a fire, whether it's dragging chains down the highway, um, clearing brush with a, a metal mower, please um, be extra cautious. This year alone, more than 8,000 wildfires have spread across California, burning more than 3.7 million acres and keeping fire crews busy. We from San Diego, Cal Fire, San Diego County Fire, we still have 28 pieces of equipment up and down the state. Crews say they are prepared to respond from the ground and the air, but if a fire does spark, Park, they need residents to be ready to quickly leave their homes. Evacuation is inconvenient. When we do the road closures, it's inconvenient. But but please, the, the inconvenience that you feel is, is nothing compared to, to losing a life. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. So very true. Cal Fire is asking agencies across the county to provide resources and staffing. They are asking residents to sign up for reverse 911 calls at ReadySanDiego.org. ABC 10 News meteorologist Angelica Campos is tracking the conditions. She's joining us now live. And Angelica, just the beginning of a hot week in San Diego. That's right, a dangerous week for many people with the combination of the heat, low humidity, and gusty conditions. The good news is that the winds are not going to be as strong or strong enough to bring down trees or power lines, so SEG&E can take a break and not cut off uh, power, which is good. We don't have that threat, but we do have the threat that if there is any fire in the county, it could spread very quickly. That's when a red flag warning is issued, and that's where we are right now all the way through 5 p.m., tomorrow afternoon. So in a case of a fire, it would spread very, very quickly. And we're not the only ones under a red flag warning, by the way. Our heat advisory will be Tuesday through Thursday because the heat is going to be a little bit delayed. The hottest days will be Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures potentially ranging more than 15 degrees above the normal for this time of the year. And while the winds will be subsiding tomorrow afternoon, the heat will peak right after. I'll pinpoint exactly what to expect around the county in our seven day forecast. And you can track the conditions in your neighborhood through the ABC 10 News mobile app. It is free. Search 10 News in the App Store. Well, right now, firefighters are scrambling to control a fire that just broke out this afternoon in northern Los Angeles County. They are currently attacking the flames from both the air and the ground. And you can see some of the fire retardant was dropped uh, in some of these situations. There's one right there. It's being called the Martindale fire. It erupted just before three between Santa Clarita and Lancaster. It quickly grew to 200 acres because of dry winds and brush. Nearby homeowners have been told to evacuate. Thousands of people are having to quickly evacuate their home as a massive fire burns through Northern California wine country. Two new fires erupted overnight near Santa Rosa. Those fires combined with the glass fire, which has been devastating communities in Napa and Sonoma. The Chateau Boswell Winery is among the many buildings found destroyed by the flames today. As of this morning, the glass fire was 11,000 acres. That's more than 8,500 buildings now threatened. Mm. La Mesa police are asking for your help, identifying the people who they say robbed a jewelry store during the unrest at the end of May. Take a look at some of these images we're about to show you from surveillance cameras. You can see several people inside looting Pierre's jewelers. Several of them wore masks, although some of them had their face clearly shown. If you recognize anyone, La Mesa police would appreciate a call. There's a $1,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. La Mesa police say that more than two dozen people have been arrested or had charges sought against them for crimes the last two nights of May. An investigation is underway into a horrific accident in Oceanside that left a woman dead. She was asleep on the beach when a tractor driver ran over her, crushing her. And this happened this morning in the sand along North Pacific Drive by the South Jetty. There's piping all along the beach. It's part of a sand dredging project. Crews were removing the equipment when the accident happened. Normally people, you know, are aware of their surroundings here because we have this big pipe that's going up and down the beach that shows that we're doing the dredge. So they should be aware that, you know, there is heavy equipment going up and down the beach. Police are still working to identify the woman. They say it's possible she was homeless. The driver of the tractor is with Manson Construction that's based out of Seattle. We contacted the company to ask if they normally use spotters when they're doing this type of work. We've not yet heard back. 
ICE will no longer be able to use the utility information of undocumented immigrants to help them be deported. Today, Governor Newsom signed a bill into law written by San Diego Assembly member Todd Gloria. Gloria, who is now running for San Diego mayor, says ICE goes to utilities to get information on where immigrants live and find out when they may be home. Starting next year, ICE will need to get a warrant or a subpoena to access that information. A Carlsbad City Council member is getting a restraining order against two residents from her district, accusing them of threatening behavior. A judge granted a temporary restraining order requested by Corey Schumacher. She says two men, along with another man who moved out of the area, have posted several threatening messages suggesting they were stalking her. There will be a hearing on the restraining order next month. Oceanside is slowing down its search for a new police chief. Frank McCoy was going to retire next month after 15 years on the force. There's been criticism from several minority groups that the city wasn't doing a wide enough search for a replacement and it was too focused on hiring from within. The city manager says they'll take more time to consider the options. The public can weigh in through a survey on the city website through this week. There will also be community panels with interest groups. McCoy has agreed to stay on through the rest of the year.